Alaska Land figures from the Siege of Bodenberg set. These figures were part of Gary Gigax's inspiration for Dungeons. The set was displayed inside Lucas Oil Stadium in 2017 as part of the 50th anniversary of Gen Con. Charlie Hall Polygon It's been 10 years since the death of Gary Gigax, the man who co-created Dungeons. Now, Gigax's family, through the auspices of the Gigax Trust, wants to bring his unpublished works to life as video games. The Trust announced today that it has partnered with crowdfunding and investment website Fig. Together, they will begin a global search for the right developers to carry the legacy of Gary Gigax forward. To accomplish their goal, the Gigax Trust has rejuvenated Gigax Games and installed Gary's youngest son, Alex Gigax, as the CEO. I was gaming since I could walk and talk, said Alex, who was raised in the family home in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. So I was playing D. The game is now out of print. A Gigax family photo showing Gary Gigax with one of his gaming groups. Left to right, Jeff Berklow, John P. Siebel, Gary Gigax, Brad Berklow and Bill Johnson. Gigax Trust, I was playing in our Thursday group through the entire creation of the legendary product line. Alex said, who is also one of the lead bartenders at a local pub called Spretchers. Since then I've been working here in town, doing a lot of gaming, hanging out with the locals, going to my local game store. I've played everything from Xbox games to computer games, board games, over at my brother's house or Magic, the gathering events at the local game store. Alex said that his job will be to ensure that future projects based off his father's work continue to retain the spirit of the original Dungeon Master. Right now the Gigax Trust is working to archive handwritten materials and Gary Gigax's personal effects, some of which formed the basis for the creation of Dungeons. Alex called the collection a treasure trove. Alex Gigax was one of the first playtesters of Legendary Adventure, a role-playing system by Gary Gigax and published for a time by Troll Lord Games. You can still find the quick start rules at their website. Hecaforge Productions and Troll Lord Games, one of the major ones that everyone knows about is his personal dungeon. Alex said, it was his personal D. He didn't want his game nights being destroyed by publishing his work and then having his group go out and buy it and find out all of his secrets. So that's one of the main things that we have to use, and all the little side derivatives of that. More than anything, Alex said that he's excited to find his father's original work a new home in the future of digital role-playing games. I grew up playing this and I'm also a huge video gamer, so I've always wanted to see my dad's work because I thought that they were some of the greatest stories and tough adventures. Alex said, I've always wanted to see them put out in the next level. Pen and paper is a dying art. Computer games, video games, they're the next generation, the next wave of games and I've always wanted to see them on that new medium and I've always wanted to be working with someone who's excited as I am about it. Alex said that many of the games that his father created were always meant to be digital properties, and the time is right to fulfill his wishes. He always had the intention of taking certain product lines and transferring them to the digital realm, it just never came to fruition. Alex said, there are a few lines that he created specifically with that in mind. The published or unpublished, there's definitely the digital realm in mind with these lines. It's something that has been talked about for a very long time, and I'm really excited to get this underway. Fig CEO Justin Bailey told Polygon that his company entered into a licensing agreement with the Gigax Trust with the intention of finding developers to pair with it. Ultimately, the Fig platform will be used to run the crowdfunding campaigns that will in turn produce the games. Alex Gigax and his father, Gary, didn't always see eye to eye. That's truly what made him such a good playtester for Legendary Adventure. But his column in the Sylvan Trumpeter, an e zine published by now defunct Sylvan Publishing in 2003, the co-creator of D. Alex plays an avatar, Zagnar the Rogue, in my regular Thursday night sessions of a legendary adventure, Gigax wrote. Alex and I do play some cribbage, backgammon, and Sinat though. When other family members come here, though, we do get in a fair amount of four-handed cribbage, settlers of Catan and Mahjong. If I could get Alex to play chess, shogi or my favorite board war game, Operation Overlord, I'd be delighted. He is too involved in computer games to have inclination to do that, though, sad face. We're running a full green light process with our advisory board, Bailey said, referring to the team of experienced game developers who help curate games on that platform. They include Randy Pitchford, Gearbox Software, Firga Sirkart, Obsidian Entertainment, Tim Schafer, Double Fine Productions, Aaron Isaacson, Indie Fund, Alex Rogopoulos, Harmonic Studios, and Brian Fargo, Inxile Entertainment. 
Any developer who wants to propose something, get it in through pitches at fig.co and we'll review it with our Greenlight committee and with Alex to make sure that it's a good fit. Once Alex is able to get the Gigax Games website up, that will be another avenue for submissions. So why did it take 10 years to bring these foundational pieces of Gary Gigax's work to the digital space? Alex said that it was all simply a matter of timing. It's just a combination of things, he said. Technology, having the right group of people there, wanting to have the fans involved and being able to keep some creative control. Maybe not full control, because we want a developer to be able to do what they're good at, but making sure that it's done with Gary's spirit in mind. So being able to keep his spirit with everything is I think one of the really big parts of why we waited so long.